Okay, let's have a look at the last of these equations that we're introducing for the beginning of the mole. Okay, so so far remember we have looked at the equation that the number of mole of something is equal to the number of particles. Okay, so capital N, the number of things that we're counting, our divided by Avogadro's number. And then we can rearrange that to find the number of particles, or we can rearrange it to find the number of mole. Okay, so, and then we looked at how to calculate the molar mass, so MR of something, which is equal to the sum of the relative atomic masses from our periodic table um, for each atom okay and then it's given the unit in grams per mole because it is the mass that one mole of substance would weigh okay so these are the relationships that we have so far that we should be remembering and now we're going to look at the relationship between molar mass and mole how do we link these two together okay so let's have a look so the molar mass units, we can write the following equation. If molar mass is grams per mole, then essentially we should be able to derive this idea that mass divided by the number of mole must be related. Okay, so if we transpose this, we get another equation for the mole, which we've looked at briefly, which is that number of mole is equal to the mass of the sample in grams divided by the mole of the uh, molar mass of the sample which will be in grams per mole okay so this is our next equation that we need to know and that we will practice using okay so again you should make a flashcard or put this on a formula sheet for you to remember you will need to memorize these formulas so little n again is the number of uh, the amount of substance given in moles and it gets the unit mol okay mass is the same the little m is mass as it is in pretty much any other equation we've seen it in in this case it must always be in grams so if it's in kilograms okay you're going to have to multiply by 1000 to convert to grams if it's in milligrams you're going to have to divide by 1000 in order to convert through to grams okay your standard metric conversions and then the molar mass, sometimes given the symbol big M, this is also MR as we've come to use it. Okay, and that's the molar weight of the sample in the grams per mole, which we get by adding up all the atoms in the formula. Okay, so let's have a look at some example questions and see how we can use this. Okay, so ethanol, C2H3H5OH, uh, is essentially the alcohol that we find in beer, wine, pretty much all our alcoholic beverages. And we're told that it contains, if we have an alcoholic beverage and contains 4.6 grams of methanol, how many mole of ethanol does it contain? Okay, one of the tricks to being able to do these kinds of things is being able to identify what information we can get from each part of the question. Okay, so if we look here, we have a formula. Anytime we have a formula, it gives us the ability to calculate MR. Okay, in this case, it'll be 2 times 12, which is carbon, plus 5 times 1, which is hydrogen, and then we will have another 16 from oxygen and another hydrogen in there. Okay, so anytime we see a formula, we have the ability to calculate MR. The other information that we have here is we have mass, okay, which should tell us now we've got mass and we've got MR, so we must be using the formula N is equal to M divided by MR, okay? And if you write down these formulas every time you do a question, you're not going to have to memorize them. So if we're looking for the number of mole of ethanol using this notation where we have the number of mole and then in brackets what we're looking for, we can pull out the mass from our question, the molar mass from our question, and then substitute in and get that it would be uh, 4.6 grams divided by 46 grams per mole okay so we should be able to see there that we will be ending up with about 0.1 mole okay so you can work out that calculation for yourself there but we set these out the same way oh you notice I am showing my working at minimum you should either highlight to identify where each part comes from or list the information from your question before substituting in but always substitute in because there is often a mark 
for the substitution in your exam questions. So you don't want to be missing out on marks. If you make a calculator error and get the answer wrong without showing your substitution, you'll get no marks for it all. Whereas if you've shown your substitution and then made an error in your calculation, you'll probably actually still get a mark. Okay, so even if you know how to do the working and it seems obvious, make sure you add it in. Okay, so if we calculate the number of particles in a mole, okay, we can end up with uh, this situation here. And for some reason, this is being a little bit weird. So let's see if we can work this out. So ethanoic acid is the main acid found in vinegar. Calculate number of mole and ethanoic acid. Okay, well, we can do this without what's showing up on the, the um, slide. So let's have a look. Again, we have an amount of mass. Okay, so um, and we have a formula. Okay, so we're going to get N is equal to M on MR, which is going to be 16.2, and I need to work out my MR. So we're going to have, let's see, we've got two lots of 12 from the two carbons, that one and that one. Then we've got two lots of 16 from the two hydrogens. And then we have three and four lots of one from, sorry, those are from the hydrogens. The other ones were from our oxygens. Okay, so we've got 24 plus 32, so uh, 56, plus 4 is 60. So this will be divided by 60. Okay, again, in your working out, you should always show the molar mass of what you're using here. Okay, and then if we put in this you can work it out on your calculator and we'll get that many grams per mole. Okay, now if we wanted to calculate the number of molecules of ethanoic acid in the sample, well then we're back to using this formula here. What we're looking for is the number of whole molecules of ethanoic acid and it's going to be equal to the number of mole multiplied by Na. Okay, so you're going to take your answer from up here Okay, so you're going to have N of CH3COOH, okay, is going to be equal to the number of mole that we got from up here, okay, multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, I don't actually have a calculator with me at the moment. Oh, actually, just looking over here, I just found one. So let's see, I'll just plug that in. So 16.2 divided by 60, that's going to give me 0 0.27 uh, mole. Oops, and I've just realized I have completely the wrong unit there. Sorry about that. So that's 0 0.27 mole, okay, because we had our grams per mole here. Okay, and so if we take that 0 0.27 and we multiply it by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, so we're going to get 0 0.27 times 6.02 is going to give me 1.62. So 1.63 times 10 to the 23. Okay, and this is a number of particles, so it's going to be molecules of CH3COOH. Okay, so we can use the two equations that we have, one after the other, okay, or in combination to answer questions. Okay, so now this one's asking us if we have one mole of ethanoic acid, okay, we can see it has two mole of oxygen atoms, calculate how many mole of oxygen atoms are present in 0.27 mole of um, ethanoic acid molecules. Okay, so let's have a look. We want to work out the number of oxygen atoms. Okay, so we need to work out the number of oxygen atoms as a ratio to the number of uh, ethanoic acid molecules. Okay, and we can see that we have two. Okay, so it's going to be equal to two times um, the amount of CH3COOH that we have. Okay, so if we have N of CH3COOH as equaling 0 0.27, then N of oxygen is going to equal, sorry, that keeps sw swapping, 2 times 0 0.27 okay which is going to be 0 0.54 and this is going to be mole okay because this was the number of mole that we had from up here 
okay so if I've got 0 0.54 mole of oxygen atoms then I'm going to substitute this into my n is equal to n on n a I want to find this n so I'm going to rearrange okay and I'm going to get 0 0.54 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 okay so if we take 0.54 divided by 2 so uh, what am I doing dividing by 2 0 0.54 multiplied by 6.02 okay that's going to give me 3.25 okay 3.25 times 10 to the 23 oxygen atoms okay remember we're specifying what it is we're counting okay and that is how much is present in half a molecule of ethanoic acid molecules okay it's like asking how many chair legs would you have if you had half a mole of chairs okay for every chair if we have a chair can't draw but for every chair we have four legs okay so if I had half a mole of chairs I would have four times 0 0.5 mole of chair legs okay so that's the kind of things that we're doing okay so have a go there are plenty of questions in your textbook for practicing this kind of thing and I'll show you another couple of equations okay so we've shown that we can calculate the number of mole based on a mass which means that if we rearrange that equation we can calculate the mass of substance that we have simply by rearranging the equation okay so if we had n is equal to m on mr by rearranging that i am going to get m is going to equal whoops ma uh, number of mole multiplied by the molar mass okay which makes sense molar mass is the mass per mole so if I multiply by the number of moles that I have that'll give me the mass okay so if we look at this question here where we're trying to work out the mass of 5.2 times 10 to the 24 molecules of glucose okay from glucose I have a formula so I can get an MR this is a number of molecules so this is a big N okay which means we're gonna to have to do two steps first of all we're gonna to have to work out the number of mole of glucose that we have okay and we're gonna do that through working out uh, N on NA so we've got 5.2 times 10 to the 24 okay molecules divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 remember to keep this in brackets when you put it in or it'll all get confused in your calculator so which should be about 8.63 mole okay so that's my number of mole of glucose okay so now what I want to do is I've got a number of moles so I've got a little n okay I want to work out n times mr okay so I'm going to take my 8.63 and I'm going to multiply by mr of glucose now we can get that by adding it all up but the question's actually given it here which is 6 times 12 plus 12 plus 6 times 16 okay so this is going to be times 180 when we do that calculation we get 154 remember it's mass so it's going to be grams which is uh sorry 1554 that's a lot of sugar that would be equal to 1.554 kilograms of glucose and that's an awful lot of glucose okay so they're examples of all the calculations that you need to know. Have a bit of a go looking through the questions in your textbook and trying each one of those, and we will try some different combinations when we get into this. Okay, and I will see you later.